In this class, we are going to learn how to rename this text at the top of the page that is on the left top corner with our company name. Usually, the text is provided over here by Oracle that is to show the company name. Suppose if you are building this next gen supplier registration page for some customers, then it is ideal to put the name of the customer over here or the logo. We will put the name of our customer over here. In this case, we will try to put the name saying learning technology something like that but in your case you can put the company name over here we'll see how to do the same in this class so in order to provide the company name at the top we have to just go to our app ui section over here then if this is not expanded just expand supply chain management locate our module that is register supplier so we have to collapse this web application fragments and there you will see the application root pages click on this so this is the shell page for your register supplier redwood page so if you have worked with the visual builder application then you might know what is shell so that is the root page of your application so this is the root for our register supplier now here if you see oracle has created a dynamic container and there is this section which will provide the name over here now we are not going to override this section in our visual builder classes we had seen how we can create the dynamic container and add the sections and we can customize this layout as well so instead of text if you want to put the image that also you can do by adding any of the components over here that is by overriding the section now we are not going to concentrate on that so we will straight away go to this section we will see how the oracle is populating the name over here let me minimize this folder if you closely observe oracle is getting the details over here from constant that is the company name oracle has created a constant over here that is over here company name so what we will do is it is ideal to provide the translation in the page level then you can refer it over here but what i will do is i will straight away add the name over here learning technology or we will set learning personalization just tab out so once you do the changes you can go back to our verification page and if you just see it is not reflecting See how worked in Visual Builder, any changes you do in the shell, it will not reflect until you refresh the browser or the page. Let me just refresh the browser. Here if you see, we are getting the name of the company. In our case, we had provided learning personalization. So one more method is, it is not good to hard code over here because your Fusion application could be launched by multiple people across the globe so there could be a localization as well involved so what i will do is i will create a translation bundle i don't have any as of now created so what we will do is we will create one translation bundle over here go to the app ui or we can straight away go to the translation bundle click on the translation bundle i will tell this as i'm creating this for register supplier and this is for english language click on create and the default language we will put over here as English. Click on plus create string. So this locale is not available, it is saying. So what we will do is we will keep this as default language. Click on plus string. Here I will put the name as company new. And here I will put our name that is learning personalization. Click on create. Suppose if you want to provide some description, this is the placeholder for company name so you can provide the details something like this now you have to go back to the shell just refresh this browser because we have created the application bundle now now if you click on this plus it is saying use existing or create new we can tell we will be using just if you just hover over here it will show any E you have created with the same name let me just put over here the learning personalization as soon as we put this name it will say learning personalization is defined over here in this register supplier en and the company name we will use this click on use now we are referring this from the translation that is register supplier n and then the company name so this is the way now let me just refresh this page and see if the translation string is getting pulled properly for our company name or not now i will go to the register supplier verification page now here if you see this name is coming from the translation bundle which we created over here now all the changes we have done 
will be tracked over here. Now, if you come to this git section over here, it will tell what changes you have done. So, one thing it will tell is under the translation, we have created a translation bundle with this name and there is a metadata which is holding this value. Then, what it will tell is we have modified the shell page. In the shell page, we are updating this constant. So, these details it will show this we have modified. Before we go ahead and further modify this Nexigen supplier registration, we will commit the changes as we are sure that these changes will go to the production. Click on add. Now, once you add the changes, then you have to commit. There are two steps in the git. Suppose you have worked in the git, you might know that we have to commit the changes after adding all the files. I will tell added the company name to application. So, if some comment you can provide it over here because tomorrow if your lead or the manager tries to track the changes you have done, then they should be able to know what changes you have done. So, these changes whatever you do from the branch, it will be visible for the manager. Suppose if you have shared the project with your manager, then your manager can go to the GIP in the visual builder, then they can select the Git repository. In my case, I have only one Git and only one branch. Now, when the lead or the manager clicks on the log, here you will see all the details which is being pushed to this branch. As of now, we have not pushed any changes to the remote branch. So, all the changes, whatever we do, it is sitting within the workspace over here in the local branch. So, what we will do is we will try to push the changes now. After running, we will commit. So, once we commit, the changes will sit in the local branch of this Git repository for this application or the workspace. So, once you are confirmed that your changes have to be pushed, then you have to tell two commits which we have done on this branch, we have to push to the remote branch. We will push the changes. So, once you have pushed the changes, your manager or team lead can see what details you have pushed to the remote branch. Now, the, as a manager, I will go to the log section and I will see yesterday there were two push and you can see what files we have modified in your team for this particular project. All details it will capture. As I told, we have to put a short note while committing in your local branch which will highlight the changes we have done. Here I have told, I added company name to the application and these are the places we have modified. So this will be useful when the manager will merge this branch to the main branch. Once we merge the local branch with the main branch, then only you should create a build job to trigger from the main branch. In case if your application is failing, then you have to delete this branch again clone from the main branch and work on the new changes. So these are the concept of CI, CD or Visual Builder Studio which we had in detail covered in our other course. So we are going to concentrate just on the functionality of personalization in those classes. So in our next class, we will see how we can personalize this company details. We will make this request reason as not required and we will try to add the DFFs as well in this page.